Um, welcome to another Tuesday night at Rosny. Uh, my name's Michael. I haven't actually presented here before, so anything could happen. Um, actually, um, and it usually does. Okay, so um, so we're just talking tonight. Um, now, is, is there any, um, at this stage, for the more experienced presenter, is there any housekeeping that we have to cover? Like fire exits, sort <laughs> of fire exits, toilet, dusting, toilets, sweeping, okay. any questions, <laughs> well, listen, any newbies here today? Have you got any newbies? Well, usually if there is a fire, we'll put a host on to it and put it out. Yeah, you, oh, that's all right. You should, we'll, by the end of the night, you'll be an expert, mate. Oh, yes, uh, hello, what's your name? I'm Desiree. Desiree, hi. I'm, and um, are you, you're with um, Lisa, are you? No, no, no. no we're just Oh, you're all together? Yeah, Oh, and who are you? Usually I'm here. You were here tonight. last time I was here, weren't you? I think. You, you it's Mitch. 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 Oh, Mitch. Okay, sorry. This is Mike here. Mike is and uh, who have we got? I'm Mike. Lee. Mike. 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 M I K E. Mike. Mike. Okay, excellent. Okay. And my name Peter. Peter. Okay, well done. Okay, welcome to um, our, our Rosny se sessions. And, um, but I uh, will just. Uh, could, uh, Get a bit of a kick along here. Um, it's myself and Greg uh, down the bottom there, Greg England. Um, I'm going to run through the, uh, the mod of the EQ6 here. Uh, anybody doesn't know what a, haven't seen an EQ6 telescope mount before? Okay, no worries. Okay, well, this is the mount, and this is what the telescope moves on, and that's the telescope, which is what we actually look through. Okay, that's the that's basically uh, that's your first six months there. <laughs> okay, now, and uh, Greg over here has, he's got a, another a Skywatcher mount which is HEQ5. I might move that around. Is that alright if I move it to you? Yeah, okay. Uh, it's a lot lighter than yeah. mine. So it's a good one to start off with if you want to go down the EQ, um, the EQ mount road. And, uh, and that's the, the mechanics inside a little bit different, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so around about in March 2021, I had, after six months after buying a, uh, an upgrade kit, um, this is what I pulled out of my old scope. All these cogs and wheels, and it's a bit like the 19th century in there, really, isn't it? Yeah. So why doesn't work anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we'll get to that later. <laughs> don't don't preempt the talk. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so it's amazing. And um, oh, that's not everything. That's actually from two mounts because, as you can see, I've got a an older style EQ6 mount which have already had an upgrade done. But it was upgraded to go to about five ten years ago. That's why it's got a white cover. So it used to just be a manual. Um, mount with just look, with buttons to press it this way, press it that way, no go to, um, um, yeah, it was completely manual. Okay, so, um, okay, so we'll sh shoot on. Now, what the modification is, is this, all these bits and pieces that drive the telescope, all the cogs and wheels and all that sort of stuff, and uh, in its place, we get, and uh, I can't show you now because it's actually inside the telescope, um, you, you get belts, okay? So you get some, a, a, a similar a system with some wheels there and some pulley type wheels and, uh, and a belt. And it's, it's, I don't know what's it made of, silicon, something really strong because um, if anybody was gonna break something it was going to be me and I did break it so, so I'm really happy and Steve will tell you all about how I lost the uh, lost the uh, Allen key uh, down the um, <laughs> down the uh, uh, the uh, deck access here so you failed the yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, right okay now any questions so far before I sort of launch into this Sounds scary to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look, I've never done this before, and I never even sort of really knew what was inside the mount, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I did this at my own peril. Um, so, uh, so, but it's been very educative. Mm -hmm. And if anything, um, you learn how the mount works and what's inside, and you gain a new appreciation of it. So, what was your motivation to upgrade it? Oh, because everybody else was doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
it was a cool it was a cool thing to do. So it hadn't failed. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? It hadn't failed. You just wanted it up. Uh, yeah, look, yeah, look, I was I was sort of at an impasse. I actually had a conversation with a um, with a telescope dealer and in the thing and um, I actually after I get all this right, I'm gonna upgrade this telescope to something that's more like an APO rather than a doublet sort of thing. So um, I had the telescope and, said, and he said, well, you really, before you actually want to, um, you know, go down the, you know, the increase, the better optics thing, you want to make sure that what it's travelling on is, you know, 100% sort of thing. So that's why I opted just to, to go down this road and just see sort of how far. And um, there have been a few little problems, which I'll talk about later, um, but I have virtually sort of halved my um, my variance of my guiding from down from uh, over two arc seconds, uh, to, to over like three or four arc seconds down to like under two, so two. on average, so it's, it hasn't been, it's been pretty good, yeah. Okay, right, thank okay. you. So, so there's a couple of guys, if you want to go here, is anybody, who's got EQ6s here? Okay. AZ EQ6. AZ EQ6, right. Okay. And it, uh, I think the newer ones already have belts in them, yeah. don't yeah. they? Yeah. 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 So, if, so if, but if you've got an older EQ6 or you inherit one from a from a, a dead uncle or something like that, or a dead auntie, um, <laughs> then um, and you want to do the modification, um, there's a couple of there's a couple of videos uh, from a guy in South Africa, uh, in England, I think. South Africa, Kari Brown and Optic Central have put out a video too. There's one of the guys who works there has, um, did it. And, and uh, so it's good to, I watched these multiple times before I even unscrewed the front of the telescope. You still ended up with a bag left over. Sorry? You still ended up with a bag of goodies left over. <laughs> you still, that, still ended up with a bag of goodies left over. But yes, that's right. that's because you took them out and replaced them with something. That's there. right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I could probably sort of uh, mark, put this on ice and space, and say it's an EQ6 downgrade kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got to get my mouse back. Sorry. <coughs> Driving this. Oh, yeah. Right. And um, now I, don't, I wonder if this will go. Probably won't go on the end. Here we go. No, I'm not going to worry about that. So, if you, um, this was my sort of setup here. Um, so, I, I looked at those videos, I studied them very studiously, and I got every bit of tool that I possibly thought I could need to, to do the job. Yeah. Sort of thing. So, yeah, um, now it's a worry. Yeah, <laughs> now it's a worry. Thing. So, and believe you me, that's the neatest I've ever done anything. That's so, impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just all lined up for the photograph, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to, yeah. So, you want the rubber hammer? Yeah. So, um, so if I go back to that other video, um, I don't think I can go on the net here. You should be able to, yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. done till 9.30. Have I got Wi-Fi? Have you got the Wi-Fi here? Yes. Yeah. So I can blow up. Whenever you hear, hear that, when, it, when it's got the old cogs and wheels in, yeah, it does sound like an old machine. You have this, whenever you get it to slew, you hear this big <laughs> so it's like driving an old Volkswagen, basically. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, um, so um, if I get uh, if I get the get connected later, I, I'll put the video up so you can have a listen if you really want to. So, um, so now I've just got to come back here and uh, get my uh, mouse back. This is uh, I'm not used to this system. Oh, right. Try down, down arrow or right arrow should take you to the next slide. Okay, here sure. yeah. okay, we go. Yeah. So, <coughs> um, so yeah, lots of things. The mallet was the most fun sort of thing. Um, banging stuff, uh, banging stuff out, and banging stuff in. And uh, this is like a little, um, a little belt 
thingy which you can sort of strap, which you can, if you've got things, uh, if you've got things like this bit of the access here that's sort of really tight, um, might be really tight and you, you can't, yeah, you can get the belt around that and really give it a pull. So, a life saving yeah, device, that's that right, yeah. Get your jam jar open. Uh, <laughs> torches, screwdrivers, whatever. Um, uh, this is a, an important little tool I'll show you about later. Um, it's actually in here, but we'll get to that in a little while. Okay. Okay. What are we doing for time here? We're about, oh, we're only about 15 minutes in, so we'll be pretty good. Okay, right. Right, so there's our little tool. And uh, it's basically, you could do this with a set of, um, a little set of pliers, needle nose pliers, they, they say. Uh, but it's basically uh, for getting this little um, bit off here, screwing it off so it actually uh, exposes the, um, the, the shaft for the worm gears in there. So basically here it is here. I put this on here because I keep losing these and thank goodness I keep finding them <coughs> uh, when I drop them. Um, but they just go out like that. And there's also a little tightening bolt in here too. Uh, so you pull that out and then that little, you can release the, that tightening bolt with that, uh, that little groove thing there sort of thing, uh, and you just use the screwdriver through that hole. So they recommend you buy the tool, it's about an extra $25 when you buy the kit sort of thing. But, uh, but technically you can probably do it without it sort of thing. So, uh, okay. so, um, So there's the, uh, there's the kit as it comes. Um, you've got these two little uh, uh, plates which go right into the machine, uh, the, plate, the motor plates that the motor's attached to, and, um, and you've got these, uh, these little uh, uh, flywheels attached to here, uh, which, is where the, which is where the belt comes through from the worm gears. And sort of uh, and attaches to the motor, so it's no longer this sort of cog and wheel sort of thing, one wheel turning another wheel. It's just a belt turning a belt, a bit like a fan belt in a car, I suppose. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. just stop me if you want to ask a question and if something's weird and you want to know why. Sort of thing, so. Okay. Right. So, so there's my there's my kit. Oh, a bit anal here, of course. Yeah, and everything's. <laughs> Um, everything's good. Um, this was uh, this is what I used here. I've got the vice. Uh, you need something to grab the, the worm gear housing in here to bash this uh, rod out. Uh, you literally, <laughs> you have, to, you have to bang, bang, bang to get it, get it out. You know, so it's, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do with your precious telescope now. But anyway, um, I, there's actually a better method. You get something. You probably need something a little bit more substantial than that. In hindsight, sort of thing. So, uh, but uh, like, a, like a, one of those workbenches or something that sort of come in and hold it, and it's a little bit more secure. Yeah. yeah so, um, uh, at towel, there's lots of grease. <coughs> so, yeah. Okay. And um, right. So, first phase deconstruction. So, there's the old motors in there, and there's the old, uh, and there's the plate. Coming, uh, which is uh, this bit here. Just turn this around. Yeah. Yeah. That bit there. So you're just basically unscrewing that. And it's something I've never even done before. So <laughs> even that, I'm sort of going, <laughs> unscrewing that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. So, and then there's the old motors in there. Um, and you reuse those motors basically, but you just replace, you just pull the old plates and everything off. Yeah, sort of thing, so. Okay. Uh, Unplug all those little bits and pieces. They're impossible to put back the wrong way because they're impossible to put the wrong one in the wrong one, and they're impossible to put the right one upside down. They're just designed so they're basically idiot proof. Sort of thing. So, uh, except for me. Let this uh, this particular one here is the uh, in the middle. It's got a little black wire coming off there. That's actually the wire that goes into the 
um, into the axis here and it lights up the polar scope sort of thing. But I managed the other day after about the tenth time I pulled it apart to actually uh, break break this bit in here where it came out sort of thing. So well not break it but but uh, pulled it out too far and it came out a little bit of solder or something that was holding it in just uh, had enough and it just well, that was the end of it sort of thing. So um, so but it's only I don't think I'll ever use it so it's not a big deal. So Okay, so and the good thing to do is once you've got those motors out is just to, um, or before we get the motors out, just write on which one's the RA axis and which one's the deck, <laughs> just so there's no confusion down the end. So uh, there's our empty telescope. And then, so just moving right along. And, um, and now we're uh, pulling this uh, axis apart here. Along here. Um, so we're going to, we're just undoing these worm screws here and we're just going to sort of uh, undo this bolt here that's holding, uh, holding all this in and then out, out pops a, uh, a big bearing sort of thing. So it usually it'll either stick there and you have to sort of like try and force it out or not force it out but poke it out or just drop on the floor before you know what's happening. But it, it, they're pretty unbreakable, this stuff, so mostly. So, um, um, and you can see it's got lots of grease on it from when it was originally sort of made. So, um, sort of, I don't know, the, the black mount, the black mount, it's probably about 20, 30, 40 years old, probably. Mm -hmm. These NQ6, I'm not sure when they came out, the, the original ones came out, but this, this so, black one's so one of the originals. Why yours was noisy because it should have been serviced and greased previously. Yeah, it's mostly the gears that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, no, that, 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 that doesn't actually do a lot of work, okay. those, those ones. They just provide like a smooth transition. Yeah. And um, um, uh, the, other thing you, the other thing they used to do was to pull it all apart and re-grease all the gears and adjust the worm gears and stuff like that and put it all back together and stuff like that. But you probably did that. You probably only did that once every five years, ten years, or, or whatever. Mm. Just when things got, you know, your guiding got sort of steadily worse, or your tracking was not quite what it used to be. That's probably when you did it. Yeah. This is Stefan. Don't close that door. Yeah. Sorry. 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 So. Um, and, uh, and this is, uh, and basically now you, you run, um, once you've got all that off, you're, you're unbolting the gear housing here at the top here. Um, and, um, and then when you've got all that out, um, basically grab it and just pull the whole thing out. So think just like I'm doing down here. So, um, okay, so that's, the, that's, the, that's it lying on the table there. And uh, so it's just a matter now of just uh, removing a few other bits and pieces. Um, this is the uh, this is the end of this uh, of the RA axis down here. So um, so what I've basically I've done I've pulled the polar scope out down the bottom, which is this bit here. Bit here, so I just screwed that out, and then sort of um, and then. Out, um, out with the rest of it, sort of thing. Um, and yeah, that's where I get that little tools come in handy uh, because uh, these things probably haven't been touched since the since they came off the mm. the factory floor, sort of thing. So, uh, so being able just to get something just to give it a little bit of extra torque, sort of thing, is usually enough to sort of uh, break things loose. But it's it's good to. Um, it's good to sort of um, loosen grub screws first, of course. Yeah, so. And so a lot of things have grub screws in it, which just sort of tighten things up. And before you remove things, you've got to sort of make sure they're sort of released as well. So, uh, and uh, yeah, bearings, more bearings, um, removing all these uh, knobs and everything, so they all come out. And uh, 
and there, there's the there's the bare housing and everything, and uh, and so there's all the bits and pieces. I don't think there was anything too drastic there. On that thing. Yeah, that's me pulling the housing out there. So I think it was great. It was a really fun. I was doing my own photography here, so <laughs> I didn't have any assistance. So. <laughs> And I only did this at the last minute because somebody, when I said, oh, what are you doing? I'm upgrading the thing. It says, oh, can you do a talk about that? And the, the, the thing is, oh, yeah, sure, okay, fine. So, Sorry. Lots of, <laughs> lots of photos, yeah. Okay, so this is where all the fun begins at this point, all the bits and pieces there um, lying about. Now for the modifications. So I basically pulled it all apart, got to modify, and... Um, there's all the original gear there, the, the brass gear. And uh, so there we're sort of using the little tool just to remove that, to expose the, uh, the inside here, uh, at this point in here. Uh, that's uh, quite important, that bit, to set, uh, because you need to, at certain points, you actually need to see it turning to know that you've actually connected everything up. Uh, so there you go, this is where the fun begins. So basically, uh, I've released the little, uh, there's a little bolt, uh, I forget which side I think, there's a little locking bolt there, which the tool, uh, which the grooves in the tool help you remove. But once you remove that, it's just a matter of just um, uh, physical force, basically, just uh, bashing, uh, bashing it until it actually comes out. And, uh, and then, then it's a matter of uh, removing the uh, removing the old brass uh, gear and putting in the new gear, which is, comes in the kit and with the with the belt sort of thing. So, so if you look at that, go back there, that gear just connected with another wheel, which, which turned another wheel, which turned and turned and turned, sort of thing, a bit like the old, the, uh, a bit like an old-fashioned clock, I guess, or old-fashioned steam engine or whatever so now we have a that's our modification there that's our belt sort of thing and I was being really trying to be really careful oh, gee, I hope I don't break this but they're pretty work they're pretty indestructible these belts so there's not much bad stuff we can do with them and um, and while you're there you can just replace some of the old grease with a bit of um, lithium don't overdo it. don't over if you ever do this don't overdo the grease whatever you do because it's uh, God awful mess, and you don't actually need all that much. So, so uh, yeah. and, uh, yeah. So, and uh, and it's basically a, a case of trying, um, sometimes trying to remove this gear housing from this axis is actually quite hard. Sometimes it can be stuck there. It's supposed to just come away. Uh, unfortunately, I think that one came away, but I think um, the other one, which I don't have a picture of here, took quite a bit of um, this, uh, this one here, took quite a bit of um, persuasion to actually come loose, so I could, so I could actually, uh, uh, so I could actually sort of get everything out and sort of get it, get Onto the, the gear housing sep separated, so I can actually work on it. So, okay, so anyway, so the reconstruction part, which is the fun bit now. Um, so there you see, we've put everything back together, and you can see there instead of a, a like a wheel that used to be in these these bits here, there's now the belt sticking out there. You can see it there as well, and um, you can just see. So see, you can just see, well, I don't know why I put that there, but anyway, you can see it. So, uh, okay. Yeah, so this is the bit I was telling you about, uh, trying to get this out. It took quite a bit of force. Um, so basically, I, I ended up just sort of finding a, a, like a soft mat and just sort of, just slowly sort of bang, bang until it just fell out. But I've since found a better method and that was just to get a, like a, my sort of workbench, which has like a grip in it. 
sort of thing and, and sort of um, and then just jam it into the workbench and then just slowly sort of wriggle it out like that. So that's probably a, a more sort of a less destruct potentially destructive method. So I think that uh, okay. and uh, yeah. So this is where this is putting it all back together, sliding all that in so it goes through the. <coughs> The, uh, the slot here in the main housing um, into the main um, into the main uh, uh, housing there where all the motors live. So and uh, and this is the the really fun bit is trying to get the little wheels trying to scrunch that belt up so you can get the little wheels in between the little wheels and there's several different methods. There's a couple of different methods that the guys in those videos showed me, which I tried but I couldn't do. So I came up with my own method. Oh, there you go. Sorry. That's just a bit, bit, bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was probably one of the first pictures I did after, um, uh, after uh, with, the, with the mount after it was modified. Yeah. Um, so, here we go. Uh, now, for the uh, for the benefit of our newbies, um, uh, can anybody tell us what that uh, object is? Eta Carina. Eta Carina. Okay. And it's a nebula. It's about six and a half thousand light years away. It's about seven. Seven and a half thousand light years away, and it's a huge star-forming cloud. Um, and it's got one of the most sort of famous stars from the 19th century. That was one of the brightest stars in the sky, but now it's sort of brighter. It's lost its brightness, so it's a what they call a cat cataclysmic variable yep. um, or ray it star. So it could go supernova at any moment. It's slowly okay. getting brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so back to reality. So we, yeah, so it's basically swapping uh, this with this, basically, and um, and then that's uh, and then you have to take the old. Um, the old noggin off this one, and off the mojo, and put the new one on. So, so there's a little bit of fine, fine, uh, fine motor stuff there to do, and uh, all sort of removing the, everything is grub screws in these mounts. There's grub screws everywhere. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's basically how I felt. Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> This is how. This is the way it's been put yeah, together <laughs> at this stage. So, that was in the mountain, yeah. right? Did anybody know? Anybody seen that before? Did anybody know where that is? No. And it's actually in Albury. Oh. Actually, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, this was my method. So you just get the housing. You just get the little, little tweezers, a pair of tweezers, which come with your kit. Okay. And you just rest it in the housing and you just pinch. You just pinch it and just leave it sitting there. And then you, you grab the uh, you, you grab the, the plate, which is one of the this one of the old ones, but it's similar to this. You grab that plate and you just push it in over the tweezers until it just pops in like that. It's so simple. And these these guys in the video, they were there and trying to do this and trying to do that and that sort of thing. And, you know, it took them like <laughs> five, ten minutes to do it, sort of thing. And I, and I tried it their way, and I thought, no, there must be a better way. So, um, so I was quite pleased with myself that I actually sort of um, worked that out. So, for myself anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, one of the hardest sort of thing, one of the most uh, difficult parts of the the whole re rebuild is this particular uh, this particular function here, this particular part of it. So, um, yeah, how are we doing for time? Yeah, keep going. And um, so, yeah, so then it's basically just bolting it in and then bolting, a, then you, you, you use the same motor, of course, but you bolt another plate to it and that plate just screws into the first plate that you put in and then doing that, um, and then you've got to do it in such a way that the, the little noggin actually goes into the side of the belt there. So. Um, Okay, so yeah, so there it is again, and there they all are, sort of in place now. So um, 
Um, now, there's a few little tricks if you really so there we go, so that's me sort of testing, testing it all out. Um, at this stage, I hadn't really learnt the, the fine um, uh, details of what they call worm gear adjustment sort of thing. Yeah. And it's something that the guys in the videos, they said, oh, once you get to this stage, you just readjust the worm gears. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I thought, okay. and it's a, that's a whole other task, which is probably... Um, something for a whole other talk if, um, if people want to know about it. So suffice to say that um, um, it, you have to adjust, you have to um, loosen this housing, pull it, unbolt this little grub screw at the front and then just sort of turn this little grub screw at the side, that one's at the front, that one at the back, you loosen this one at the back, you turn this one in, in or out at the front until you feel it's sort of engaging and then you um, tighten this one up, tighten that up and then hopefully when you run it you don't hear the sound of the belts sort of um, spinning oh, over the yeah. top of the um, mm -hmm. thing. I was going to ask you, did they get yeah. much in the way of structural <coughs> belt tension? Um, what, sorry? Belt tension? No, 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 virtually nothing. And I've only really resolved it myself to a point today where I, my opinion is, and Greg's might differ here, but because his mount is different, of course, um, is that you get everything as tight as you can. And um, I, not I, only, only because um, there's still just the tiniest little bit of slop in these axes, which I can't, I don't, I'm not really sure how to get rid of, sort of thing. So I've sort of done lots of adjustments, but um, but there could, it's probably someone who's probably someone who's maybe got a little bit more experience with these uh, will probably help me one day. Sort of but suffice to say that um, with that tiny little bit of play, it still slews properly, it still finds objects properly, and it will still track. And, I, and, and it tracks in a really, you know, much better way than it used to. So, yeah. so uh, The problem is yeah. uh, with that when you change direction, you know, because yeah. If you throw it in one direction, it it's up the uh, the backlash first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not sure. This is something I just wasn't really prepared for, and I'm not really sure I can really speak about it either very much, other than to say that it's just a problem. I don't think. I don't think it's at the end of the world, but I think you know it would be. A, Doesn't look bad. It, it's it's not too bad, but it's <coughs> but but I don't really like it. So, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, so, um, okay, and uh, so, worm gear adjustment, yeah. Um, so, there you go. <laughs> so, that, that, that's it, that was it. So, there's no um, you know, YouTube worm adjustment and stuff? Yes, yes, no, there are actually, it's quite a detailed set of instructions on oh. how to adjust the worm gears for this particular mount. Yeah, so, uh, so suffice to say, um, they're quite easy to follow, um, but the results just, I've found that the results just not guaranteed, sort of thing. You just have to keep fiddling and keep fiddling. And, that's right, it's yeah, iteration. And it's, it, it, yeah, and uh, it's just taken me so long to actually get it, uh, get it to this point. Um, when I had it set up at, um, to try a bunner the other night. Um, I had, didn't realise the whole thing was going on this axis. You know? um, like there was almost sort of like that much movement. I, I, had, I hadn't realised that I'd sort of <coughs> left it in that state, <laughs> sort of thing. So, but it still worked. But um, but it's just not optimal, obviously. So, yeah. I was just going to say, like, it's, it's a very good thing because uh, a good lesson to have because. These sorts of mounts, and there's another maker that makes exactly the same one of the Saxon. Yeah. The Saxon and the Skywatch mounts, which, like you said, go back decades, yeah. they're constantly on the second hand market. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're picking up an old one, mm. there's this really good facilities to, to, to upgrade it to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 But, you know, um, hopefully um, there's a. Um, Greg and I have a bit of a brain to trust now with, with some of it sort of thing, so hopefully if somebody down the track wants to do it, um, uh, we, we can be of assistance and, um, on the right. So, so given that movement, 
you're obviously not happy about. You not you don't regret having done it. No, no. no I think it's fine. Uh, the guiding s speaks for itself. Right. So, yeah. 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 I think I've got. Uh, sorry, I should have. I didn't grab it tonight, but I've actually got some like screenshots of the, where the guiding and it's like it's less than sort of two. Oh, you said that. No, yeah. two, two uh, arc seconds, sort of thing. And uh, whereas before it was sort of it was jumping around all over the place, so up to four arc seconds variance, right. sort of thing. So, but to be honest, I was still getting round stars, and with this uh, wide field refractor, so. So yeah, I, was, I just did, I, I, I obviously did it because it was the cool thing to do. So, yeah, yeah. so the movement's not affecting the accuracy then? No, no, no. Once it's once it sort of stops and centres, and uh, the the weight of the mount and everything just should hold it in place. <coughs> it's only if you come along here like this and start, start sort of doing that, which you yeah. which you don't do anyway. So if it was a windy night or something, it probably be good. Yeah, actually, possibly yes. Yes, that's a good, that's a good thought. Yeah, but have to be pretty windy with us. Yeah, have to be pretty windy. Yeah. But yes, yes, it could affect it. Yeah, the guide cam would be good enough. Yeah. 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 The guide cam would be good yeah. enough to make adjustments. Obviously, if you, if you yeah, go yeah. yeah, setting pulses to the mount. So, yeah. Yeah. but this little uh, little bit of movement really is usually mentioned. It's only noticeable when you change direction of the mount. When the mount changes direction. Yeah, yeah. Whilst yeah. you're tracking. An object, yeah. the tensions, uh, there. the tensions, yeah. 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 the gears are engaged, yeah. 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 And, and it just works. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All it's going to affect is it's going, the mount's going to need to have after a meridian fit, yeah. the plate solve and recenter, and then you're away. Yeah, and exactly. yeah that's yeah. right. With plate solving and stuff like that, it, it, it covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> it's, it's one of those yeah. nice things yeah. to get right. Yeah, that's it's right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Especially with this little device. I used to sit sit out there and think uh, plate solve. I've got a plate solve within 15 seconds. Was um, yeah. I was doing pretty well. Um, this thing does it in like under two seconds, yeah. sort of thing. Uh, so uh, that yeah. backlash could come yeah. also from the normal wear and tear. You know, yeah. normal yeah. use. Yeah. At some point, you will get a little bit of backlash. So I wouldn't say you have it because you've uh, upgraded. Your Modded the, the mount. It's yeah. just something, it's, and it's just what's there. You, you can adjust it. Yeah, that's right. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so <coughs> no biggie. But, uh, but, so but I, but I did a, a lot, some last minute adjustments this afternoon because I was still unhappy with the amount of thing, and I, I, I improved it probably about as I think it's about as good as I'm going to get it now. Mm -hmm. so, okay. yeah, yeah. so, so, the, the cost of, of the cost of the upgrade kit and the cost of a mount. If you, if you could get yeah. one second hand and then do that, what, sort of, what are we looking at? Do you have any um, Okay, well, we're looking at uh, for a new um, EQ6 mount, or they call them EQ6 Pros. EQ6R, EQ6R, yeah. yeah. or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's how much did he pay you to fix it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's how much I have to reimburse you when I ruin your mouth. Yeah, that's that's the that's the question about the money. Yeah. Yeah. Ha having gone through the, the yeah. process of putting it in, and I'm thinking of the situation where you buy a second hand one of these mounts and someone's done the the belt modification. Mm -hmm. How easy is it or to stuff up the belt modification and actually make it worse than it was before? Um, I don't think it's possible okay. to do that. Um, oh, Lisa, 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 you have experience with this? I actually have bought a second-hand HCQ5 mount with the Rowan belt mod on it yeah. already, um, and it's really hard to stuff it up. Um, and I've pulled it apart and played with it and done all sorts of terrible things. <laughs> yeah. But having said that, the belts in my mount did actually expire after some time. They, they warped. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the guiding was off, so I pulled it apart and had a look, and that's what had happened. And it was really easy to replace the belt. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've done it, I, I, in my experience, it's pretty bothersome. Worst case scenario, if someone had popped it up, you just put another key in it. Yeah. It'll cost you $250 for another key. Yeah. Okay, so we'll drive them out. Let's listen to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, Dallas. Where's Dallas? Yeah, thank you, Dallas. Uh, yeah, so this is one of my big take homes from last week. Yeah. Oh, connection fails. Did you switch it on? Probably didn't turn it on. Yeah, it's better. Oh, did anybody else spot the newbie mistake that I made when I was setting this up? Because yeah, you were so aggressive. I actually put the telescope and everything on before I actually put the counterweight on. Big no, no. <laughs> yeah, I nearly, I nearly damaged a child on a school, um, on a school. Um, school night one night in Riverside because I forgot to do that and the whole thing went bang and the child was only like inches away from <laughs> where it was. Yeah, so, um, so yes, astronomy is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so, um, oh, I just want to say, tell you about gas coins, Lee. Oh, no, it's uh, the, the green box. Oh, actually, I know what happened. I, I haven't actually, the no, I, I, sorry, I know what happened. I haven't done this, sorry. So this is where Dallas, Dallas should be doing this. He should be. Um, do you, do no, you it's listen on. to Dallas last no, week? Uh, go back to the mount, Michael. You go back to the mount. And I'll yeah. show you what to do there. Just so you're powering the mount from the SIA. Yeah. Yeah, that's the that, that was the problem. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just give it a second. Yeah, and, uh, yeah that's right. Right. Now it should be a plug in. Yeah, see the top one here. That's it. That goes right. Now the button that you've got the arrow on, that should be... you got a slider to the right. Yeah. That yeah, one there. He's trying, he, he's trying to. No, no, it's not just it's click not. on. Oh, but maybe I've got something set up here properly. That's on. Yeah. 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 Another newbie mistake there. <laughs> there we go, we'll try that again. There we go. There we go. Right, and um, here. Oh, it's quiet. Oh, that is quiet. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. That's too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when it's going to hit you in the head. Yes, yeah, and it's actually very worrying when um, when you're um, out at night and uh, and the way I used to do my imaging, I was like 20, 30 meters away undercover, and uh, and then I used to rely on the hearing the mount and making sure yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I, it's, I, I it's good. So when I started slewing after this, I had to sort of make sure it's. Sort of See what the mouth is doing. So. 
That's very good. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's that part of it is superb, and the guiding is um, is excellent. So I'm quite happy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Lisa. With um, guiding, did you yeah. have to change any of your settings? I mean, I used PHD too. I don't have a settings. Um, no, no, I don't think I had to change settings. No, no, no. Um, of course, now I'm guiding with this um, ASI Air, and it's, it's very similar. The settings are very similar. So that you, you basically um, haven't changed the, the ratio, you know, between uh, yeah. the speed, but the, the motor yeah. is turning and the uh, and the worm is turning. It turns exactly at the same speed as before, you know? Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to change anything. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Greg. Mm -hmm. So Greg's going to come up here and um, and uh, and then we'll have a, once uh, Greg's done, we'll go and have a break, I suppose. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Sorry? Yeah, if you want to. I had the orientation right, I took a picture with the iPhone. So I knew that the, the wire coming out of the motor, and I pulled 
because you have to remove to remove this top plate off the motor. And once you remove that, you then need a pinion puller. And I didn't want to spend 30 bucks on a pinion puller, so for 10 minutes I cut a bit of um, right angle steel, put a thread in it and a groove. That pulls the um, pinion here off the motor. Because there's no grub screws on this one, these are press fit, so they're on really tight. So you could either support it between something, if you can fit it between the pin and the motor and tap it out with a, a, a shaft or a screw, but that would quite as well, but if you don't want to make that, then they're about $25 for those little sort of pinion pullers. So once you've got the pinion off, then you put on your little um, aluminium um, drive pin. And being aluminium, you do it up tight and you give it a little pinch. If you do it up too tight, you'll strip the threads. And you'll either have to drill another hole and re-thread it. But they don't need a lot of um, tightness. And I think the dimensions between um, when you put this on and it's here, it's um, 6.5 mils, I think they say to leave between the top of the motor and the bottom of the new gear. So once you've got that on, then you put the little pulley block on. So you under the two grub screws, you move the one that was already in there, and you put this little white pulley there, which is like, just keeps the tension on the belt. And then, it's just a simple matter of um, removing the main. <coughs> Here, that one there. So there's two grub screws on that old brass gear. So you remove that. You may need to get a screwdriver just in under here to pry that off because it's on quite tight, the old brass one. And there's grease everywhere, so I, I cleaned all the grease off because you don't need grease with um, the pulleys. Then once you've got this, um, once you've got this new main. Um, new one, the drive. I basically just lined it up with the. Um, once I've got that back in, I lined that up. And then it was just a matter of tightening it, re tightening those three screws, and then adjusting it so you had about tension there with a bit of medium pressure you know, deflected at about two mils. You just want to have enough tension on that belt that just about two mils of deflection. That one's a bit loose section. And once you've got the wire back in, you just need to make sure that it's not fouling on the, um, the shaft here. So you just tuck it in, make sure they're not fouling on the shaft. And all the ratios are the same, as Eugene said, so there's no need to worry about um, adjusting anything. And it just work took about 40 minutes. So guiding, I've actually had a, my rasser on this, so there's about 11 to 12 kilos on this little HVQ5 and it guided at about 0.8. Wow. And there's no, that's the back place. But one of the best things I ever did was just backing this off the quarter of a turn and backing the, that off because now it's loose enough that it, So there's no there's no play. Guides it very well for a little mount and it's um, a lot lighter than my um, EQ6R Pro. I was gonna ask what's the difference between the EQ and the five and the six? What's is it just literally the, the, the This um, one can handle around twenty kilos and this okay. one's only supposed to handle about eight or ten. Right. And that's, that's the difference. Yeah, it has to be. It's a, a lot bigger heavy yeah. boost. So you could probably put that Vixen and all that on the HD yeah, drive yeah. and it'd be perfect. perfect yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. this end of the rest of the time. Mm. Mm. So. Is it obviously a lot of difference in what you're having to pack away carrying your setup? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't do it. I can't pick the, yeah. the six up. Mm. I've got a crack carry that one. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the truck and um, I can sort of put side by side bars on that. I can put yeah. a refractor on one and a you know, Sukov on the other, and, you know, and I can sort of really load it up and it, it'll still sort of, you know, still guide. And still so it was a, a it was a very quick mod, like 40 minutes. I did one at a time, and the only thing I really had to be careful was not to put too much um, tension on those um, grub screws. Otherwise, you will strip the aluminium. Mm. You just get them lined up and get the tension on that one's just loosen the bit. So I just have to undo those three um, pieces and then just pull the whole bracket down, which will tighten it. Yeah. And are you talking about belt tension or? Just common sense. No, they reckon just some medium pressure it should deflect about two yeah. mils. Yeah. And that's deflecting too yeah. much. Yeah. But you shouldn't have them too tight. That's what the six doesn't have the little um, belt tension guide. And either does the EQA, so I don't know what the purpose. Mm -hmm. But I think this mount should have basically come out with that. I don't see why they still ship it with gears. Mm. It's a big economics. But the um, AZ HE5 has the belt That's on. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't have those little um, tensions. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. either does the, the belt. It's just the gears and then belt, yeah. belt goes around the gears. And yeah, the same as the AZ6. So that's something that probably well have um, developed themselves. A question. The, um, with the cover removed at the moment, I think can obviously see all that, but does the original factory cover fit over the top? No. Of that was a good point. The kit came with a little um, spacer made of nylon. Yeah. So that just um, just stands it off. And it also came with a slightly longer um, Allen bolts. So that just stands that off. And the approximate cost of that kit? About $220. The other upgrade was the saddle bit. So the saddle so every time I put it off, off because the two wheels are like this close together. So, <coughs> so it's a bit short. But yeah. <coughs>